Hi, uh, my name is Dorji Angchuk. I am the engineer in charge at the Indian Astronomical Observatory, which is situated at 4,500 meters above sea level. In fact, this is one of the world, one of the world highest observatory. रात के अंधेरे में वो ट्विंकल ट्विंकल लिटिल स्टार्स नहीं देखते हैं पर सितारे क्यों नहीं देखते हैं कभी सोचा है क्यों चलिए बताइए करेक्ट बिकॉज ऑफ पोल्यूशन पर फिर अगर जब बारिश हुआ भी तब तो खुले आसमान में बिल्कुल साफ साफ दिख जाने चाहिए तब क्यों नहीं दिखते बताइए है कुछ जवाब अरे वाह बहुत सही पहचाना आपने आप में से कुछ लोगों ने एकदम करेक्ट पहचाना है लाइट पोल्यूशन तो चलिए आज हम लद्दाख जाएंगे और दिन का नहीं बल्कि रात का लद्दाख देखेंगे नाइट स्काइज देखेंगे मिल्की वेज देखेंगे और चर्चा करेंगे दोरजे आंक चुक से लेट मी टेरी दिस He is the first and only Indian to be inducted as an honorary member of International Astronomical Union in 2020. Let's talk to him and know about light pollution not only in cities but at 10,000 feet in Ladakh. So, what is light pollution? When we compare the skies of Delhi and uh, uh, Ladakh, uh, basically, it's uh, uh, in a place in a place like uh, Delhi or even Mumbai or if you take Bangalore. So what's happening is that if you look up into the skies, the only thing that is visible there is either the bigger planets or the moon or some aeroplane passing by. So we, and uh, while as if you compare Ladakh, like it will be filled up full of stars. So that that is the the reason why it is such that because of the light pollution that we have in the cities. So uh, what happened is with the advent of light after uh, the light was invented. So people started putting up light all over. So people thought uh, more light the merrier. And then uh, also uh, at the same time now recently uh, the LED revolution came and uh, which made the lights also. cheaper uh, so people started putting more lights so this was one of the uh, uh, one of the reason why uh, we have light pollution all around so uh, if 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 i say what is light pollution so uh, light pollution is something like uh, uh, a light which is wasted and it is uh, thrown up into the sky what is the problem with light pollution so basically what is happening is uh, the stars that we are uh, seeing is like it's a very far distant sources so what is happening is that uh, uh, so wh- when we are seeing the stars so we are catching the light that is uh, that has come from that stars uh, long, or since long time as you can say light years away or many light years away so what is happening when you are creating an artificial light that is nearby you then you are uh, not letting the light from the stars to reach you and hence uh, this is uh, creating a, a barrier between what you are in uh, as an observer and how, uh, and the, uh, see, who is seeing the stars so that that is the problem that uh, the light pollution is creating as a hindrance or a barrier between us how is light pollution affecting the health of human being our ancestors they used to uh, be awake in the daily light and they used to sleep in the night so what is happening is that uh, uh, s- sleeping properly in the night in uh, totally darkness it enhances our melatonin production so if the if the sleep is not proper and is disturbed by the light pollution then the melatonin production won't be uh, sufficient and then uh, the uh, melatonin is uh, known to cause a variety of problems to human kind uh, like being obese and uh, uh, it is also known to indirectly known to affect people uh, for many cancer diseases also apart from humans how is light pollution affecting the wildlife around us most of the wildlife are nocturnal species so uh, with the light pollution they won't be able to migrate easily in a sense that uh, it creates an artificial light source so what have, uh, so there are many migratory birds which actually f- uh, fly from one place to another so when they see a light pollution they just keep on circling around uh, till they are tired and then they they, they just uh, stay there and they are affected by all the vehicles coming there are other instances like uh, uh, there are some kind of turtles which are like uh, uh, in fact uh, what uh, 
they sort of have migrate uh, into the sea looking at the moonlight. But when they see a uh, light pollution emanating from the street light, they come towards the cities rather than going into the sea. So this is where they, they are like uh, diverted and then they are killed uh, on the roads, etc. So these are like one of, and there are many insects which like pollinate uh, with the help of uh, moonlight or starlight, but then uh, uh, their uh, whole uh, system is uh, broken down. So what is the solution to this problem? We, we should use light wherever it is needed, whenever it is required. So for example, we take if there is a street light, it should be properly shaded so that it is reflected to the ground. And then uh, we can put uh, curtains in our rooms so that the light from inside, it, does, uh, it stays inside the room where it is actually needed. And hence, uh, the wildlife can also thrive on that. So has someone or any organization has taken any responsibility to curb this light pollution? As far as I know, in, in India, a, there was a uh, very wonderful case in Nagpur where uh, with the help of an initiative by an uh, ID advocate, uh, Abhishek, uh, they had in fact uh, used the technology which the, when they have installed the new street lights, uh, they they actually dim the street lights when it is not needed. That is from 11 p.m. 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. So these are actually uh, having a very good advantage. Like uh, they can uh, uh, save electricity and they can uh, save money also altogether. And also uh, they are now planning to have uh, something like uh, dark sky places in uh, in the tiger reserve nearby uh, Nagpur. What is dark sky place? Basically, dark sky is an, any place uh, which is like uh, specially protected uh, for for their uh, uh, steady skies, um, basically for education, scientific knowledge, tourism, and uh, uh, sharing the knowledge with others. How many dark skies do we have in India? Uh, right now, we don't have any declared dark sky, but uh, uh, we have proposed Halne Dark Sky Reserve as one of them in India and uh, soon it will be notified and then uh, the first dark sky reserve will be in place. And what are the benefits of dark skies? Uh, Halle area is known as a very good for uh, night skies. So we always thought that we should be protecting our night skies. And uh, uh, subsequently the villagers also should not feel bad that uh, uh, somebody has come into our own territory. So uh, we devise uh, this Halne dark sky reserve as such that uh, the villagers will also benefit from the astrotourism factor in the Halle Dark Sky Reserve where people from all over India as well as abroad they can come and they can enjoy the stars and uh, well as the uh, villagers they, they will benefit from that uh, people will be having extended uh, stays there and uh, they will be availing all the resources like uh, homestays and restaurants etc from where they can earn. If creating a dark sky can create so much to the economy, then why are we so late in setting up one? We have never realized that uh, the starry skies can be a natural resources from which we can earn also. So this realization, I think, came very late in us. And then uh, now with the help, advent of internet, with uh, having uh, mobile phones in everybody's hands, now people can realize, they can see that uh, uh, the landscape can all the astronomy or the starry skies can also be beautiful too. So how did you end up being an astrophotographer? Since 1998 I was working at the observatory I used to admire the skies uh, which which was here which is uh, prevalent all over Ladakh especially at Hanle. So it was a very beautiful thing and uh, in 2010 I happened to meet uh, uh, Mr. Ajay Talwar who is a very well known uh, astrophotographer. So when I saw his image and like I was stunned and I was I thought like uh, although even though we have a beautiful nightscape uh, landscape so we can combine like him uh, both the night nightscape uh, that is the starry skies and the landscape together and uh, so next time when he came around he asked me what uh, he can bring I just told him that he can bring me a DS DSLR and then it all started in 2010 uh, my journey into the photography. Do you remember the first image that you clicked of the darkness? Yeah, the first picture I clicked was the star trails uh, because uh, star trails is the first uh, um, 
um, uh, nightscape that we ever took because uh, there's not much to do. We have to just take a uh, very long exposure like the my first star trails was around one and a half exposure, uh, one and a half hours exposure. And uh, this was with the foreground of our, our own uh, Himalayan Chandra telescope and uh, it came out very well and like uh, I was uh, uh, into photography since then. So generally what all equipments you use for astrophotography? The basic equipment uh, that I have is uh, two full frame cameras that is one Canon 6D and a Sony A7S2. Uh, and uh, I have got a uh, uh, few prime lenses uh, uh, ranging from uh, 14 mm to 35 mm. And uh, this uh, along with the sturdy tripod, uh, they help me in taking uh, beautiful night sky photographs. What is your go-to lenses? Uh, my uh, go-to lens uh, is always uh, the 24mm uh, that I have, which is f1.8. Uh, and uh, this is, and uh, I've got another Sigma 20mm also 1.4. This is my go-to lens for most of my work. What advice would you like to share with the upcoming generations of astrophotographers? Basically, I would uh, always advise people to start uh, astrophotography uh, with whatever the basic uh, DSLR camera, entry level DSLR and the kit lens they have. Uh, so once they have uh, learned uh, some aspect of it like uh, the uh, exposure, the aperture control, ISO control. So then uh, they can migrate to better uh, uh, full frame cameras where the result will be much better. Okay. So name some best night sky studios in India. Mm, Ladakh, that is the best uh, night sky uh, studio that we can find in India. Piti in Himachal Pradesh, uh, Run of Kutch, uh, Jai Selmer, uh, those are some of the places where one can do very good uh, astrophotography also. What is Hanle and, and why is it so relevant on India's map? So Hanle is uh, it's an, uh, village uh, that is uh, near the Chinese border and uh, this place is uh, 270 kilometers from uh, Leh itself and uh, this is where we have established uh, the Indian Astronomical Observatory where now we have uh, uh, the first telescope that was that came here was the two meter Himalayan Chandra telescope and then subsequently there are ma many telescopes that came the uh, 0.7 meter GIT telescope the Hager telescope with the help of uh, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and now we are uh, about to have uh, a big uh, 21 meter class uh, maze telescope by the Baba Atomic Research Center here. So this uh, uh, place that is the Indian Astronomical Observatory is home to all the astronomy studies that is going happening inside India. So what is the task of an observatory? Basically the um, uh, task of uh, an observatory is to study the celestial bo bodies, uh, particularly the night time, whatever the uh, phenomenon that is happening in the stars. Basically what we say is that uh, Astronomy is the oldest science, so we have learned uh, so much uh, studying, uh, seeing the skies. Uh, for example, uh, our ancestors, they used to look up into the skies and they used to know the time. They used to know when they should be sowing the seeds, harvesting. So uh, we, we came to know more about, by studying the stars, we came to know more about ourselves and how we are formed. So basically, it is the, just the extension of that study that we are doing at Hanley. So what is the difference between today's astronomical studies and the time before Galileo? In the earlier days it was it used to be the visual study and then we have like sort of uh, exhausted with what, whatever knowledge we could gain from that. So later on after Gal 400 years back when Galileo first uh, pointed his telescope uh, to the uh, to Jupiter and to moon he found much more and then slowly people started uh, knowing more about uh, whatever uh, the nebula the galaxies that is that is around us and then they knew more about various elements that was discovered from the space and then it was later found on the earth and um, uh, like uh, we even the nuclear reaction that we know right now has uh, uh, was seen first seen in the star and that is the sun which is our own star how astronomical study has completely changed from the earlier era to, to, to today's digital world. Earlier days when there was no TV, no nothing, uh, no internet, 
people used to sit around the hut or a fireplace then uh, the grandfather used to tell the children or his children or their uh, his children's children uh, story, stories about the stars etc but now because of the advent of tv and other things we don't have time to uh, to um, listen to our parents our grandparents so it seems uh, these things are completely getting uh, forgotten uh, but now as a part of the um, uh, of our one of our project we have started cultural astronomy that is like we ask each and everybody who is possible that whatever the connection we have historically with the stars with the moon with the sun then uh, they should come up with such stories which we will document and then obviously we wanted to uh, get it printed in some form so that it remains intact now that is what preservation is being an engineer he is trying to save the wildlife along with their habitat with his photography and his ambition has not stopped him yet he is now working to collect stories of past and document them for the upcoming generation jab aapke bachchon ke bacche ho jayenge तब वो दूरजे अंगचुक जी की मेहनत को याद करेंगे उन्हें सलाम बोलेंगे ये वीडियो स्कूल के स्टूडेंट्स के साथ जरूर शेयर कीजिए जो इन्वायरमेंट को लेकर हमेशा कंसर्न रहते हैं अनसंग इंडिया फाउंडेशन चैनल के साथ बने रहिए लद्दाख की और कई अनसंग कहानियों के लिए जय हिंद